seriously, the only biggest overreaction Vince McMahon has is this one. It was like, or he swallows it a lot. And that huge Adam Apple of his, you can see it whenever he swallows, especially during uh, his feud with Austin, he would always swallow. <laughs> or are you talking every other overreaction he does, especially when he's on commentary, he's like, ha, 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 oh no, to the buckle, no ref, no, god damn him in his radio voice. <sighs> Those were the awful days. But yeah. Oh yeah, his over biggest overreaction, his you're fired phase when he looks like he's like, just took a shit and also got a blowjob at the same time. You're fired! And smiles like that. But yeah, come with me on an adventure to Vince McMahon's biggest overreaction ever by what culture? It is what culture. Yeah, it is what culture. Let's do this. Don't cross the boss, especially when the boss in question is madder than a shoebox full of rats. Vince McMahon is the capital city of Barbecue Shishville, off. and his spats with God, his preposterous 70-year-old granddad arms, and whatever the hell he's doing here. That's not a granddad arm. You, you wish granddads had those kind of arms. CEO, because he might just take his vengeance to the next level. The crazy level. Well, I'm he did have a feud with God. The ten biggest Vince McMahon over And I'm an atheist, and even I found that to be stupid. Around the world. The first and most recent entry to the list. As of recording, Titus O'Neil is currently suspended from the WWE for 60 days for grabbing Vince's arm at the end of an episode of Raw. The whole incident is really, really weird. Backstage, yep. Vince is known for enjoying the odd grapple with his employees. Yeah, he likes to uh, fuck around, but when a black guy does it, oh, beware. Vince is mad. But after Brian Vince was is fucking crazy. Germany, and while the post raw cameras were still rolling, surely that wasn't the best time to do some joshing, even if Titus O'Neil was only asking Vince to be chivalrous and let Steph walk first. The dumb decision from Titus to put his hands on the boss at a very emotionally loaded time places it. Not in really dumb, because wrestlers do that all the time with Vince. 90 days, and he doesn't and care. Before that, Vince wanted to have him fired during Black History Month, Ugh. then it's definitely a huge overreaction. Number nine, Lana. Oh, Lana, Damn. to you. Around WrestleMania season 2015, the company were incredibly high on the ravishing Russian, prepping her to be the female face of WWE. She was over as hell with the crowd, and after she split from Rusev, WWE turned her face and started letting her cut loose. And by cut loose, we mean she got into a dead-end romantic quadrangle with Ziggler, Rusev, and Summer Bloody Ray. Despite the angle being less entertaining... But she looked face, amazingly hot when she was with Justin. Ziggler, See, wearing the jean shorts. We're still seeing each other in real life, and when the two got Oh my games, god, we're actually a couple. Ring, we're getting Vince married. Vince, lost. Vince lost his and fucking mind. Abruptly, put Lana back together with Rusev, and Lana's been in the doghouse ever since. I mean, has someone told Vince McMahon that wrestling's fake? Yup. He, he knows that, right? No. Number eight, the fight I don't think he does. Cold. So it turns out when you're That's you the way he has a bunch of yes men around him. Like a cop handing out a speeding ticket. And wouldn't you know it, some of Vince's fines have been chestnut bonkers over the years. One such fine was handed down in June 2002 when Steve Austin walked out of the company refusing to job to Brock Lesnar. Now, that is a fairly terrible thing to do, and Stone Cold said as much in the years since. But that's not to yeah, say he totally that regrets it now. a shade over the line. Not only did Vince make almost the entirety of next week's war a collection of segments denouncing the rattle snake but he also tried to find him 650 and then he told the rock to go out there it's like if you don't want to be Austin here to weed him down to don't be here get the f out because, yeah, meanwhile the rock was out filming movies and it was not a part-time wrestling number seven it was only not even there half the time for punishing one top great logic there for another when cm punk quit wwe after the royal rumble 2014 citing creative frustration and a misdiagnosed staff infection it left a huge hole in the company he was originally suspended for the infraction and according to punk he expected the company to call him back to work in a few months. They never did, and he was finally sent termination papers. What well, is wedding day? Arrive? They arrived on June 13th, which just so happened to be CM Punk's wedding day. Be oh. a star. Vince has publicly apologized for this, claiming that it was a complete coincidence. Bullshit! It was supposed to be the happiest day of his life, but well, maybe we could believe This coming from a man famous for firing who fired Don Marie while she was time, pregnant. Such as Number six, and, uh, firing, firing Del Rio. Charlie Haas and Jeff Hayden while they're on their honeymoon. He spent over a year away from it after he was unceremoniously fired in August 2014. Didn't they release tests when he was still injured when they were not supposed to right? Surely you fire around, injured wrestlers? Slapping people you work with, and that's of course their Jack the Jobber. Well, it's not quite as simple as that. See, the man that Del Rio slapped was Cody Barbieri, a social media manager at the time, who had just made a 
Joe Reese's, Reese's joke. joke came and it was Alberto's job to bus his tray after eating because Del Rio is Mexican. Ha ha ha. Fuck yes, you. Social media savvy on full display there. Del Rio got rightfully angry at this remark and when he got a smirk instead of an apology, slapped the stank of Never piss off a Latino. Both men Latino rage. Company, but Del Rio we get mad as fuck. Two months before Barbieri, which goes against every anti bullying, anti racist. Just ask the guy that here. got beat up from five Batistas. The guy who got beat up it's fine from Eddie Guerrero who called his doozy. In daughter a whore one time. And PG in a move that still rustles people's jimmies to this day. As part of the move, Vince imposed a ban on intentional blading, i.e. the practice of a wrestler cutting himself with a concealed blade to provoke blood flow. Not every wrestler was wild about the move, including Dave Boom Boom Batista, Boo, who went the ban, getting colour in a cage match with Jericho a few months into the piece. How do you not yeah. have blood in a this cage match? An isolated Come incident, on. And Batista wasn't suspended, but he was fined to the tune of $100,000 for one match. Batista has since said of the incident, I was just heartbroken. I literally think he sucked the life out of me that day. Yeah, well, well, you and every woman Vince has ever kissed on camera. Oh, shots now, fired! Or the double booking controversy. This one's just petty. In 2009, the Pepsi Center in Denver got double booked. Monday Night Raw was contractually scheduled to be there, but the owner had also verbally agreed to book a basketball game between the Denver Nuggets and the LA Lakers. And it sounds familiar. The Raw had to move, and it got moved to the Staples Centers in Los Angeles, and Vince gave Denver the finger live on air by booking a 10-man tag team match. The good guys, headed by Cena, wore Lakers jerseys and laid a beating on a team headed by Randy Orton, who just happened to be wearing the jerseys of the Denver Nuggets. That oh, right. is Alex Petty. Number three, the huckster and the natural <sighs> man. Speaking of Petty, in the mid-90s, was horrible. engaging in a bold business stupid. strategy. Look and at a Vincent waste company, of fucking see time. See the most recognizable stars were, then offer them more money to work for WCW. They did with Randy Savage, Gene Oakland, Bobby Heenan, Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, Bret Hart, but it began with the Hulkster. Now, Hogan had been out of the WWF for nearly a full year before he signed for the big... Feeling Hulk trapped in turn. paradise. But that didn't stop Vince from... And a bunch of other shit. Back. He created a series of skits set in billionaire Ted's wrestling war room depicting the Hulkster, the Nacho Man, Scheme Gene, and, of course, billionaire Ted himself. Who is if some saw the skits as... Playing like, a total idiot. They were actually pretty inflammatory, containing a lot of material that could be legally considered slanderous. Vince only packed it in when he was explicitly ordered to by the head of the USA Network. Network, but not before Man Vincent killed off all the characters. Number two, the destruction of the Ultimate Warrior. Judging from how the, the DVD? Ultimate Warrior has been literally idolized by the WWE DVD? in the form of a huge statue, it might come as a surprise that at one point, WWE loathed the man. Vince yeah. and Co. hated him so they, much that in 2005, yeah. they released a DVD but they want you to know that. destruction of the Ultimate Warrior. I love that Warrior DVD. They just bashed the fuck out of them. Out of them. The WWE stars sounded off on the Warrior running his And then years later, ground, I'm guessing, they're like kissing his ass. WWE Network. See, Warrior had been fired for the company for apparently holding Vince hostage over money owed to him, rehired, fired again for no showing events, before getting into legal trouble with the company over the trademark to his name. Considering that WWE eventually made amends with the Warrior and relaunched their financial partnership, this DVD has to be seen as a huge overreaction. Number one, the Montreal Well, it could have been worse. Remember Brett, the you know, Red Hart DVD no that came out? In the corner. In if Red Hart wasn't going to do it, they're going to call it the Red Hart story and, and just totally bashed the fuck out of him. But then Brett Hart, Brett Hart signed on to it. And yeah, they did. The they, problem was, it Brett turned out to be the DVD we know of today. to drop the strap to Shawn Michaels, a man he hated in real life in his home country of Canada. Brett had offered to drop the belt in the States, but at the height of the Monday Night Awards, Vince couldn't stomach the idea of his company's big belt being featured on Ted Turner's WCW, and so ordered Hart to be screwed out of the title live on pay-per-view at Survivor Series. HBK what well, can you blame him? A longer shooter, blaze left and put the women's title in the trash can on WCW TV. When, of course, Vince, mad as ceramic pants, believed that that was the only course of action that he had, and infamously, Brett screwed Brett. And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Tell us about it in the comments and don't forget to like, share and subscribe and you can follow me on Twitter here. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com and I'll see you soon. Yeah, Vinny Mac. He is a very senile, insane old man, man. He has a bunch of yes men telling him what he wants to hear. He's just an insane old man. Have you heard that Paul Heyman story where like, where Vince sneezed one time and he just stopped the meeting flat out for like 10 minutes because he couldn't control that sneeze and was just focused on that sneeze. Oh yeah, he also doesn't believe in sick days because apparently Vince McMahon has never took a day off and he doesn't believe that there is no sick. Like one of his producers or some shit called in saying that he was sick and like in the weather or some shit and told him to come in and he said like, I'm sick though. And Vince told him flat out, I was like there is no sick. So the guy had to go to work half 
dying and shit. Oh yeah, let's not forget when one of the producers or agents or whatever went to a funeral, told them he was going to a funeral for his family. One of his family members died. And during the middle of the funeral, Stephanie McMahon called him on behalf of Vince saying like, where the fuck are you? You're supposed to come back. Like, I was like, oh, I'm at a funeral, I told you this. Like, and then Stephanie McMahon just flat out told, basically yelled at him saying like, no, you didn't, blah, 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 blah. And the guy just quit right there. It's like, I wouldn't blame the guy. Oh, right. Vince Russo's story, or like how he finally figured out that Vince McMahon did not give a shit about him and just wanted to make money off him. Like, because Vince Russo wanted to take time off to be with his family. And Vince flat out said, I don't understand why you can just get a nanny, you make enough money. He's like, he, and Russo told him, like, it's not about the money, I just want to take care of my family, I need time off, I miss my family. And Vince McMahon just flat out told him, I don't give a fuck about your family, I need you here to make me money. And that's when Vince Russo quit. But yeah, Vince McMahon, he's just out there. What, what else you guys remember from this shit? It's like, we can go on and on about Vince McMahon and shit. His biggest overreactions. There's never-ending stories. Anyways, that's our video from What Culture. Take it easy, Humanoid Nation. Humanoid Freak Out. Bye!